you know, going back millennia, silver and gold are the best preservers of purchasing power in an inflationary environment. So, you know, I like to say, build your build your moat before your castle. I look at physical metals as kind of like my defense. That's just savings. Mining stocks are my offense and where I expect to increase that purchasing power dramatically. And, you know, I think it's really important to have a strategy because a lot of people are waking up to what's happening right now, but they don't really have a strategy. Welcome to Inside the Markets, flagship podcast, stockpulse.com. Joining me today is Steve Penny, silverchartist.com. I run through the precious metals markets, equities, and talk a little uranium. So, Steve, I appreciate you taking the time. And I guess I also a big thanks for uh, coming to the first uh, Stockpulse Symposium here last fall. And I'll look forward to seeing you at this one here. So, uh, you got an interesting story. So, before we dive into the markets here, maybe let's run through a little profile on uh, who Steve Penny is. You found this sector in an interesting way. So, I want you to elaborate. Steve Penny, appreciate you taking the time. You bet. And first, Rob, thanks for inviting me on. And thanks for inviting me out to the Silver Symposium. I'm looking forward to going out again this year. Uh, I know we're gonna have a great time. Yeah, how I got into this, you know, I don't have a degree in economics. I don't come from Wall Street, which kind of I think is a little bit different. I'm a self learner. And I think it really, if you want to go back, it started around 9-11 for me, which, you know, obviously, that was such a chaotic time. I was still in college. And, uh, you know, that got me investigating how the world works and investigating geopolitics. And what I learned, I started learning about the petrodollar system which then led me to learn about, you know, the Federal Reserve and how these monetary systems work and debt-based fiat currency. And, you know, I was stunned that why isn't this stuff taught in school? And I, from that point on, for, I guess, 20 years now, I've just been a self-learner in, in this space. And then I guess it was around uh, 2015, 14, somewhere in there that I started really getting into technical analysis as well. So I, I like the fundamentals. I like the technicals. I like to say fundamentals tell me when to buy and technicals tell me when to buy or when to sell. So it's kind of a short version of my background. I, mean, I was an Air Force pilot for 18 years and uh, separated recently and uh, do part-time at the airlines. But really, this is this is my full-time job is trading the markets and uh, sharing my research with our members. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's get into here. We've got uh, quite, the, quite the conditions here. You mentioned a few reasons why you got into this. Well, they're all hitting you right front and center now. We've got uh, a massive inflation. You've got uh, plenty of geopolitical risk. Um, I guess let's let's jump back up in the plane here and give us the thirty six thousand foot view of kind of how you see maybe the the general economy and then we'll we'll specifically dig into the metals. Yeah, that, that's that's such a great place to start is with that thirty thousand thirty six thousand foot view, because if you're zoomed in a little bit, it can be frustrating. Like looking at this last year, the metals have trended lower while almost everything else has gone up in the face of rising inflation. And people say, what the heck is going on? I thought gold was an inflation hedge. And I think for the past year or so, the market has seen high inflation numbers as bearish for gold because they think incorrectly that the Fed is going to get ahead of the curve and we're going to see positive real rates. Well, that's not going to happen. And the market's going to realize that at some point here. Now, even if they get a few nominal rate hikes in, which I think they will, inflation's up at 7.5%. So if they get rates up to say 3% and nominal or uh, inflation falls to 5%, that's still negative real rates. And it still makes sense to store some of your wealth in physical metals, especially gold. So I think that's where we are. The narrative is gradually shifting from a technical perspective. We saw a really nice breakout last week. Anyone who looks at charts had been watching this compression triangle pattern forming. And we got a breakout above that last week. And then the next target became making a higher high above 1880. Well, we got that as well, and we closed the week above there. So by all definitions, that's a technical breakout, and it looks like a trend reversal. Now, that said, nothing goes straight up from here. Uh, you know, We're going to see some backing and filling, and I think this is a logical place from a short-term perspective. It's a little bit of a pullback, but I do expect higher highs and higher lows going forward into 2022 with a lot of volatility along the way in both directions. Yeah, and um, you mentioned inflation, and um, I think uh, we could probably argue uh, John Williams' uh, shadow stats uh, probably put another ten points on whatever number they're using. Either way, we're at record levels here. So, um, yeah, I guess let's let's get into kind of how to how to combat this. Um, that's that's negative interest rates, no matter how you slice it. Unless you're getting a raise every year, you're not going to beat this. So. Obviously, uh, the guys like you, Silver Chartist here, um, play the metals game here. There's several ways to do it. Um, obviously, you can uh, take delivery of your metal. Um, you can play junior mining. So maybe give us a little insight into, into how the Silver Chartist kind of gets started here. Yeah. So in inflation, obviously, it hurts savers and it helps uh, uh, borrowers. And uh, you know who's the biggest borrower in the world? It's the United States government. Um, 
And who's the biggest lender in the world? It's the banks. So, you know, we can follow the smart money. And the smart thing to do is not keep the majority of your savings in cash. I mean, I keep minimal amounts in cash, just a, you know, a little bit of emergency fund. So you want to transition to have exposure to hard assets. And in this environment, you know, going back to millennia, silver and gold are the best preservers of purchasing power in an inflationary environment. So, you know, I like to say, build your, build your moat before your castle. I look at physical metals as kind of like my defense. That's just savings. Mining stocks are my offense and where I expect to increase that purchasing power dramatically. And, you know, I think it's really important to have a strategy because a lot of people are waking up to what's happening right now, but they don't really have a strategy. You know, they just dive all in or they see someone on Twitter or social media say to do something. So they do that. Um, so I think it's really important to have a personalized strategy here. And there's no one size fits all, but crafting one and learning how to develop one is really important. Yeah, um, you touched on some important there. I think um, um, you know, the the moat uh, build that get get that stability first with that. I call it the sponge. Um, you transfer your dollars into the metals and at least keep some stability there. Um, but yeah, offense. Let's talk about getting on the offense. Junior mining stocks all beat down across the board. Uh, several CEOs crying to me that uh, we're in a bear market, and I quickly remind them that we're in the mother of all bear markets. That that uh, there are bull markets that they're in a bear market. So um, how, how's that going to change here? Well, what, what are these juniors going to have to do? I think uh, we both agree that uh, a nice move in the metals would probably move their their opportunities in multiples. But how do you find those winners? Obviously, that's why a guy like you's in business. But let's talk about uh, about the, how the playing field looks for those juniors. Yeah, a lot of places to go with that. So personally, I like to divide the whole precious metals complex into like six subcomponents. So you have physical gold, physical silver, senior gold miners, senior silver miners, and then the juniors, junior gold, junior silver. Now, I like to look at those on a ratio basis and see what's the most undervalued. And right now, it's far and away, junior silver miners are the most undervalued component of the sector. Now, granted, they're much more volatile, more risky. So having a strategy to combat that is you know, important. Personally, I like to have a percentage in the top tiers, percentage in the mid tiers, and then about 20% in those explorers and developers in the junior category. Now, as far as like identifying ideal, um, you know, the best juniors, that, that requires a very specific skill set. And I, I've learned, I've, I've taught myself that, but there are people that are far better at it than me. And I think one of the best in the world is Jeff Clark. He's been doing this for, you know, 10, 20 years. And I'm really grateful to have him on our team. He's my go-to for stock selection, especially in the junior silver category. But, you know, for people who are new, it, it, analyzing a mining stock is not like analyzing a, you know, general equity where you're looking at price to earnings ratios and return on investment, all, all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, drill results. It requires a very specialized skill set. So if you want to play in that game, I would say, suggest getting some help and educating yourself. Yeah, I, uh, I tend to agree there. Um, it's a backwards model. It's, uh, it's built to lose money and find hidden <laughs> treasures. And uh, um, uh, yeah, and obviously we need those. And I think, um, um, let, let's get into the, 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 the investing public here um, in this sector here. Uh, it's been a lot of old money, I think, um, in, in here. And, and you got this, this upstarts, these uh, Wall Street silver uh, crew here, or, you know, the silver stackers take delivery. That'll, that'll change the game. Um, how, do you, how do you see these juniors improving their opportunities? I mean, uh, can they reach this group? Is this group able to invest in their stocks or are these guys going to be silver stackers and leave it there? No, I, I think uh, so. I, I think you're asking like the Wall Street silver crowd, the younger generation, are they going to um, be interested in the junior mining stocks? Yeah, I, I do think so. I mean, I, I think that they've actually got it right. You know, often it's the old guys who've been doing this for a while who, who have the strategy down. And I, I'm not saying they, they're wrong, but I, I'm impressed to see the this new crowd coming in, going to physical metal first, which is what I, I advocate for, and then looking to speculate in the mining stocks. So I think they're doing both. And I think... Um, you know, the, as the metals can continue to gain traction and more attention, yeah, the, this younger generation is going to really, you know, just bid up those prices. Tremendous opportunity here in the junior silver miners. Yeah, let's get into a little bit of a, a forecast here. I think uh, the conditions look pretty sweet uh, for the metals here. Um, like we talked about higher highs, higher lows, spells bull market. Um, how do you see the next year going? This is maybe put six months, you know, end of the year for us, Steve, we're having a, a cocktail on uh, New Year's Eve. How did it go for the for this sector? I think 12 months from now, I can say with a high level of confidence, I, I would expect much higher prices. Six months, I, I think the same, although, 
you know, the shorter time frame, it's the predictions become harder. I, I like to say I deal in probabilities, not predictions. And I think the probability is for much higher prices in six months and 12 months from now with gut wrenching pullbacks along the way. We got to be prepared for that. And preparing yourself for that, I think, re requires an understanding of the fundamentals, the super macro fundamentals. And whenever I get, you know, despondent, like frustrated, you know, why, why are they down so much? You got to zoom out and ask yourself, is, is there a solution to this problem, specifically the debt problem that these governments face? We have a $30 trillion national debt here in the United States, and that's a problem without a solution. So you might call that a predicament. And the governments have two choices. They can either default honestly, which they're not going to do, or they can inflate away the debt, which history suggests they're going to do. They always choose that 100% of the time without fail. And in that environment, as that situation resolves, silver and gold are the prime beneficiaries of this exact environment. And that goes back millennia. So despite any kind of volatility, you know, having that broad picture view helps you to stomach, you know, volatility in both directions. Yeah. And you, you also, of course, uh, cover the uranium sector. Um, same deal there. A lot of those uh, stocks been beat down here. Looks like some good opportunities. Um, I guess uh, uh, drop some knowledge on us how you see the uranium market here now currently and then how do you expect at the end of the year? Yeah, next is silver and gold. My biggest sector exposure is to uranium. And back in November, we had just gotten, um, I think, run a little too far too fast. I actually took some profits. But now we're, we've pulled back 30, 40, some cases 50% on individual stocks since those November highs. So that's where I like to accumulate. So I think we're squarely in the accumulation zone. And for anyone who's maybe not familiar with the uranium story, the condensed version is that, you know, it's a pure supply demand story back in um, 2000, um, back when that Fukushima disaster happened, you know, the, the spot price of uranium just plummeted from over $100 a pound down to like $16 a pound. And, you know, uranium provides 20% of the baseload power for here in the United States. And it, it requires $40 plus uranium, probably closer to $65 uranium just to break even for these mining stocks. And uranium is now a growth industry. Nuclear is now part of, you know, the it's embraced by both the left and the right as part of the Green New Deal and all of this. It's at zero carbon emissions. So bottom line, the world's going to need a lot more uranium and the price is going to have to rise to incentivize that production. And right now we're around $40, $43 uranium. And, you know, we're going to have to get up into the 60s to incentivize that new production. And there's a lot of money to be made between $45 and $65 uranium, especially in the mining stocks. And it's such a small sector. It's even smaller than the junior silver miners. At last check, there's only like 65 or so junior uranium miners in the world. So that's, it's a very small uh, sector. And when big money floods in, it, it just moves to the upside very fast. And how, how do you see the, the capital markets as far as uh, when uh, when the Dow lets loose? Will there be a will there be a flood into this commodity sector? I know we've all been kind of waiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, when will that occur, you think? I, th I think it's starting. If you look at the CRB index, which is a basket of commodities versus the Dow Jones going back to like 1970s, that ratio just hit a, hit a historic low. I think it goes back even further, like probably 100 years. That ratio is never, commodities have never been so undervalued relative to stocks. And it looks like if you look on the chart that we hit a, a low in March of 2020. And since then, commodities have been outperforming general equities as a whole. So now that you say, okay, uh, commodities are undervalued relative to equities. Well, what are the most undervalued commodities? And I think it's silver, it's uranium, it's platinum, and uh, to a certain extent, uh, copper and nickel. So commodities, I think, are have already started to outperform. And this is a trend that's going to continue for several years into the future, at least. Well, it, it takes a smart guy, a guru, perhaps, to, to navigate these uh, tricky markets here. So uh, in closing here, Steve, why don't you give our investors a, a view of your model here and how... Uh, and how they can get help by you. Yeah, sure. I would, I would invite anyone to check out our free newsletter. Uh, it goes out every Sunday. And the idea is to provide a ton of value for free. And it's, you know, we don't hit you with high pressure sales tactics or any of that. Just provide uh, our, our thoughts. There's the option to upgrade to a low ticket premium service. Right now, it's only like 10 bucks a month. But that's where you get a fully transparent, over the shoulder look at exactly what I'm doing. And I send out real time alerts every time I make a buy or a sell. And, um, you know, we're, we're investing into the service. We're growing really fast. We've only been doing this about a year and a half and uh, just humbled at the growth. And we're going to be investing into the service and probably raising the prices soon. So I would, I would encourage people to check out the free version. If you like it, you might consider upgrading. But uh, silverchartist.com is the place to check out more. more. 
Yeah, and of course, uh, we'll uh, welcome you here to uh, to the Silver Valley or, or close to here in, in August. And I always appreciate that. And I think it's important to, to get face to face time yeah. um, with uh, with the investors and certainly a lot of these CEOs. We want some questions answered. So I'll, uh, I'll look forward to, to having you there, Steve, and certainly appreciate uh, what you did last year. And we'll look forward to seeing you again this year. So Steve Penny, Silver Chartist, appreciate the time. We'll look forward to checking back in and see how some of these predictions go. You bet. Thanks, Rob.